guys, Mr. Backberg here. This is the second part of lesson 1.2. You can see we've only got two objectives to work with this time. First thing we're going to do is we're going to look at some symmetries of equations, both graphically and algebraically. And then the second thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the equations of some circles. So we're going to look at symmetries graphically. Uh, now we know graphs are made up of a bunch of different ordered pairs, so we're actually going to use those ordered pairs to help us distinguish between the three different types of symmetry. Okay, the first type of symmetry we're going to take a look at is x-axis symmetry. So what I'm going to do first here is just draw a nice straight line highlighting that x-axis. And then I'm also going to draw a vertical line through the picture uh, so that we have some intersection points with that vertical line and our graph. Uh, so the way we describe x-axis symmetry is having this general point xy on the graph means that we also have to have the point x negative y. So if we were to take a look at this top intersection point, let's just call that our general point xy. Well this graph is symmetric around the x-axis because we also have this intersection point down here. Now we didn't move anywhere left or right so that x value stays the same but what we did do is we flipped across this x-axis so now we're dealing with a negative y value. The next type of symmetry we can run into is y-axis symmetry. Uh, so just like I did on the last slide, I'm going to highlight the axis, but this time we're running up and down the y-axis, and I'm going to draw in this horizontal line uh, to highlight some of those intersection points. So the way we tell our graph has y-axis symmetry is, again, we're still going to be dealing with this general x-y point, so I'm going to highlight that right here. Uh, in order to have y-axis symmetry, if the point xy is on our graph, then we also have to have negative xy. Okay, so this time we're flipping our graph across the y-axis, so we are moving left in this case, so that means a negative x value, but we didn't move anywhere up or down, so that y value is going to stay exactly the same. The last type of symmetry we're dealing with is being symmetric with respect to the origin. Uh, so I've already got that general point xy highlighted. Uh, the way we tell a graph is symmetric with respect to the origin is if we have xy on the graph, then we also have to have negative x, negative y. So there's really kind of two ways we can think about this. Um, one way we could think about it is a combination of that x-axis symmetry and that y-axis symmetry. So one thing we could do with this x-y point is we could take it and flip it down over the x-axis and then also flip it left across to the y-axis and those points should match up. The way I personally like to think about it is doing like a 180 degree rotation. So if I were to take this graph and just flip it over, okay, then all those points should match up. So this thing over here, uh, this point over here, is going to be our negative x, negative y point. So what we're going to do is we're going to graph out this equation y squared equals x minus 2, and then we're going to decide what type of symmetry it has. Okay, x-axis symmetry, y-axis symmetry, origin symmetry, or it could be none of the above. Uh, but I guess what we have to do first is normally we're used to dealing with equations and graphing them as like y equals. Well, right now we've got y squared. Uh, so what we're going to have to do is get y all by itself. So in order to do that, I'm just going to do a quick square root on both sides. Uh, so now the left-hand side is just y equals. On the right-hand side, we do have to be a little bit careful. We took the square root, so we have to remember to put the plus or minus in front of there. Okay, so we've got y equals plus or minus the square root of x minus 2. And then we're just going to plug in some x values, get back some y values, and graph it out. Uh, so 0 is always a nice place to start. So if we try to plug 0 in here, uh, we get plus or minus the square root of 0 minus 2. Well, 0 minus 2 is negative 2. We can't do a square root of negative 2, so 0 is not going to work. Uh, I think if we plugged in 1, that would also not work for us we'd end up with negative 1 underneath the square root. Uh, but once we plug in an x value of 2, I think that one's going to work out. Okay, So we get plus or minus the square root of 2 minus 2. Uh, so 2 minus 2 is 0, square root of 0 is just 0. There's really no such thing as a positive 0 or a negative 0. It's just plain 0. So let's go ahead and plot that one out. We've got the point 2, 0. So right here. Uh, next one, let's plug in 3. 
So we go plus or minus the square root of 3 minus 2. Well, 3 minus 2 is 1. Square root of 1 is 1. Uh, but then remember, there's this plus or minus out in front of there. So we got plus or minus 1. So what that means is at an x value of 3, we've got a y value of positive 1, and we've also got a y value of negative 1. Uh, I'm going to plug in one more value. Let me give myself a little bit more room. And I'm going to plug in, let's pick something strategic. I'm going to plug in 6 because when we plug this in, if we go 6 minus 2 underneath that square root, we're going to get 4. And 4 is pretty easy to do the square root of. That's just 2. So out here at 6, uh, we're up at positive 2 and we're also down at negative 2. So if we do a quick sketch of the graph, it's going to look something like this. So now what we have to do is decide what type of symmetry we're looking at. Um, and I guess what stands out to me is if I draw this vertical line through our picture, we can highlight some of these points, like this one right here would be kind of like that x comma y point. Well down here, right below it, we've also got this x comma negative y point. So what that means is that we've got x axis symmetry. So now might be a good time for you to pause the video and try this one out on your own. Uh, if we look at the equation y equals x squared minus 4, it's already in the form that we need it to be. Uh, so I'm just going to start plugging in some values. Uh, let's start with 0. Okay, so plug that in. We get 0 squared minus 4. Well, 0 squared is 0 minus 4. We get negative 4. So at 0, we're down at negative 4. Uh, if we plug in 1, 1 squared minus 4. Well, 1 squared is 1 minus 4. We've got negative 3. If we plug in 2, uh, 2 squared minus 4. Well, 2 squared is 4 minus 4. We get 0. So the point 2, 0. And then if we plug in 3, okay, well, 3 squared is 9 minus 4 is 5. So 3, 5. Well, what we've got right now, I don't really see any type of symmetries. So maybe let's plug in some more points. And um, I know this is an x squared. So I know that the graph is going to be a parabola. So we've already plugged in some numbers on the right. So maybe we plug in some numbers on the left, like negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Well, if we plug in negative 1, negative 1 squared is 1, minus 4 is negative 3. OK, so I, can, I think we can see that y-axis symmetry developing. Uh, if we plug in negative 2, negative 2 squared is 4, minus 4, we get 0. So negative 2, 0. And I think we can tell that if we plug in negative 3, we're also going to get 5. So we're up here at negative 3, 5. So there's our parabola shape. Uh, this parabola is symmetric around the y-axis because if we draw on this line, not a very straight line, but here's our xy point, And over here, this is supposed to be negative xy. When we talk about symmetry algebraically, there's three different tests that we can run, uh, one for each type of symmetry. When we're checking for x-axis symmetry, what we're going to do in our equation is we're going to replace the y value with a negative y and see if that yields an equivalent equation. So the same exact equation that we started with. When we're checking y-axis symmetry, this time we're going to replace our x value with a negative x and then if that gives us an equivalent equation, then our picture, our graph, would have y-axis symmetry. Uh, as far as origin symmetry goes, we're actually going to replace both the x and the y with their opposites. Okay, so a negative x and a negative y. And then again, we're going to look to see if that gives us the same exact equation that we started with, and that'll tell us that we have origin symmetry going on. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to look at the equation x minus y squared equals 1. We're going to run all three tests to see what type of symmetry we're looking at, if any of them. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to use that symmetry to help us draw the picture of the graph. Um, now I'm going to run through, like I said, all three types. Only one of them is going to work. There are some special equations where you could end up with more than one type of symmetry. Uh, but for the most part, the ones we're dealing with, it's just going to be one kind or none at all. So let's start out with this x-axis symmetry stuff. 
For x-axis symmetry, our test said that we were going to replace our y value in the equation with a negative y. So if we go ahead and do that, we get x minus, uh, here's our negative y that we're going to plug in, squared equals 1. And then what we try to do is play around with this equation to see if we can get back to that thing we started with. Well, we know that if we take a negative thing and square it, well, squaring something means times itself. So a negative times a negative is going to give us a positive value here. So it's going to be x minus, uh, this becomes a positive y squared equals 1. And that's exactly the same thing that we started with. Okay, So that tells me that this thing has x-axis symmetry. Okay, Now, like I said, it's just going to have one type of symmetry, but I'm going to run through the other ones just so you can see what it looks like. So for y-axis symmetry, uh, it said we were going to replace this x with a negative x and see if we can get this thing to uh, go back to this original equation. Well, in our original equation, we had a positive x here. So what we could do is divide everything by a negative 1 in order to turn this negative x back into a positive x. So then we got x double negative here becomes plus y squared equals a negative 1. Uh, but then we're throwing off all those other signs, okay? Like this y squared is supposed to have a minus in front of it. Uh, the one on the end is supposed to be a positive one. Uh, so we can see that this one just isn't working. I don't think there's any way that we can get back to our original equation. If we look at origin symmetry, uh, origin symmetry said that we were going to replace both the x and the y. So this is going to say negative x minus negative y squared equals 1. And again, we're going to try to play around with this thing. Well, just like at the beginning where we had this negative y squared, that can become a positive y, but then remember we're still subtracting. Uh, right here with this negative x, there's really nothing we can do with that right now. Now it looks kind of like that last equation that we were dealing with, and we saw there wasn't really much that we could do there. Um, so I think it's pretty safe to say that this one doesn't have origin symmetry. Okay, It's just that x-axis symmetry going on. So now that we've got a general idea of what our picture should look like, having that x-axis symmetry, uh, let's go ahead and draw it out. So I guess the first thing we have to do is rewrite our equation so that we can actually graph it out. Um, so I guess what we had was x minus y squared equals 1. I'm going to get it as y equals just to make it easier to graph. So I'm going to subtract the x over so we get negative y squared equals negative x plus 1. Uh, divide everything by negative 1 and we get y squared equals positive x minus 1. Uh, and then we'll have to take the square root of both sides. I'm going to do that over here on the right hand side. So we end up with y equals the square root of x minus 1. Uh, now I didn't put the plus or minus in front of there yet, but there it is. So don't forget to do that. Um, and now let's go ahead and graph this out. I'm going to make a quick x and y chart uh, just so we can plug in some x values and get some y values. Um, if we plug in 0 underneath the radical, we get a negative, so that's not going to work out. So I'm going to start at 1. So we plug in 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. Square root of 0 is 0. So 1, 0 is our first point. Uh, if we plug in 2, 2 minus 1 is 1. Square root of 1 is 1. But then don't forget to put your plus or minus in front of there. So plus or minus 1. So at 2, we've got positive 1 and negative 1. There's our x-axis symmetry stuff coming into play. Uh, and then let's also plug in, um, I'm going to go with 5 just to make the square root work out nicely. Uh, 5 minus 1 is 4, square root of 4 is 2, and the plus or minus in front of there. So plus or minus 2. So here's what our graph should look like. Uh, it's kind of like a sideways parabola with that x-axis symmetry. Here's another chance for you to pause the video and try this one out on your own, uh, and then restart it once you're all finished with that. Uh, now I'm not going to run all of the tests on this one. Um, I know that this one is going to have y-axis symmetry, so I'm just going to go ahead and run through that one real quick. Uh, so we replace the x with a negative x, but then our equation says we need to square that, plus y equals 3. Well, if we square a negative, we saw in the last example, that just becomes a positive. So that's x squared plus y equals 3. And that matches up with our original equation. So this one should have y-axis symmetry. As far as graphing this one, uh, if we rewrite this one real quick, 
I'm just going to subtract the x squared over, so we get y equals negative x squared plus 3. Uh, making an x and y chart to graph this one out. If we plug in 0, uh, 0 squared is 0. Throw a negative in front of there, it doesn't really change anything. Add 3 to that, we get 3. So at 0, we're up here at 3. If we plug in 1, 1 squared is 1. Throw in a negative in front of there is negative 1. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. Um, earlier we said this one has y-axis symmetry. So since the point 1, 2 is on our picture, the point negative 1, 2 should also be on our picture. Uh, if we plug in 2, well, 2 squared is 4. Throw a negative in front of there. We get negative 4. Add 3, we get negative 1. So at 2, we're down at negative 1. Uh, again, y-axis symmetry, so negative 2, negative 1 should also be on our picture. So negative 2, negative 1. And here's kind of a general idea of what this graph is going to look like. It's an upside-down parabola. Last thing we're doing in this video is doing kind of a quick introduction to equations of circles. So you can see the standard form of the equation there. It's x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Uh, r is going to stand for the radius of our circle. h and k, uh, grabbing those values from the equation, give us that center point for our circle. Uh, so if we were given this information, uh, we are told that the center of our circle is at the point 9, 5, and the radius is 4, we could pretty easily write out the equation by just replacing that h, k, and r with some actual numbers. Okay, so we're going to have x minus 9 squared plus y minus 5 squared equals 4 squared. Okay, and that's the equation for our circle. We can go the other way. Okay, here we're given an equation x minus 6 squared plus y plus 2 squared equals 36, and we're going to find the radius and the center point. Uh, so first thing I'm looking at is that h and k value. Well, right here our h value is 6. Uh, over here we've got a plus 2, but if we look at the standard form of our equation, it said minus k. So in order to get a plus, we're going to need a double negative. So this is going to be a minus 2. So there's our center point. As far as the radius goes, well, we're looking at 36. Up here I had 4 squared, but 4 squared is just 16. Well, the square root of 36 is 6. So our radius is 6. Uh, I guess that's all I have for this video. So remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.